I'm here at Edge Cliff in Potosi, Missouri, and today I'm going to learn how to harvest wine grapes. Come with me into the vineyard. Hey, Sarah. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Good. What kind of grapes are these? So these are a Chamberson grape. It's our biggest crop here. We actually make eight wines out of this Chamberson grape. So whether it's sweet, dry, semi-sweet, we kind of make it all out of this grape. So our biggest harvest we'll be picking beginning of September, and we'll probably pick all through October. Well, and it's so fun because you actually get to go into the fields yeah. with your right. friends and harvest these wines, and then you work at the winery right. year round, right. so you're pouring the wines that you've right. helped harvest. Right. And there's something about it watching the whole process and then knowing like the next year that you're pouring that wine. It's cool. So we've harvested the Chamberson grapes, and now it's time to go and crush. Follow me. You grew up here on the farm. Yes. And it was a cattle operation and a hog operation. Yes. When and why did you turn it into a vineyard? <laughs> well, that is a long story, but the short of it is Steffi, my sister, who is a landscape designer and horticulturist, has always wanted to grow something here at Edgecliff. So we have these huge organic vegetable gardens down the hill, and it was actually a friend of hers who made the suggestion that she put grapes in here. And everybody said, oh my gosh, you'd be crazy not to plant grapes. So the ground is very fertile because we had cattle on it for 65 years. And we planted our Chamberson in spring of 2008. And by September of 2010, we had our first harvest. In two years? Yes. Wow, that's unusual. Yes, very unusual. How many types of grapes are you growing here? We're growing three different kinds of French American hybrid grapes. The Chamberson is our biggest crop. We have four acres of the Chamberson. And so out of the Chamberson, for example, how many different kinds of wine are you making? <laughs> okay. A bunch. Yes, a lot. But right now, I think on the shelf, we have nine different styles of wine made with Chamberson grapes right now, and we're also making ports. So we've got a couple of barrels of port in here too. And including your rosés yes. are made from the Chamberson. The rosés yes. here are delicious. We're gonna try some later. <laughs> So the grapes are hand-picked, yes. and why do you hand-pick rather than using a machine? Well, we're a very small winery. The expense of bringing in that machinery is a little cost prohibitive to do it, but we also think that by doing everything by hand, we're getting the best quality of fruit. And we do have other wineries who want to buy grapes from us, and then they use our grapes to make their wines because they know they've been babied to death. And so what do you love most about the winemaking process? Because it really is an artistic, very craft-driven process. You do have to baby all your vines for all of those months right. that you have to harvest and kind of decide what you're going to do with the wines from there. Right. In here, what we're trying to do is just control that process of what's going to occur by picking out the yeast that we want to use, be able to get the flavor profiles we want, and by taking care of it that way. I love that process. I love being artistic. I love being creative. I love cooking. So for me, it answers all of those kinds of creative needs that I have inside me. So yeah, it's, it's very fun. And I think that Cindy has some rosés that have been in kind yeah. of the tank for just a little bit. Right, they've been fermenting only for a few days. So let's go look at them. Okay, let's okay. go. When we make these two different rosés, it's the exact same grape. They were harvested one day apart. That's amazing. They're very different in color, but also the profile that you get from the nose of this juice already is changing. And it's because of the different yeast that I have used. So it's bringing out a different flavor profile 
from the same kind of grape, the same kind of juice. Both made with chamberson. Yes. Different yes. yeasts. Yes. Completely different aroma. Right. Different mouthfeel. Different M much flavor. Much more citrusy mm -hmm. in this one, and this one has a lot of berries. Yeah. The magic of yeast. It's incredible. Yeah, it is. This is awesome. Thank you very You're much. You're welcome. Maybe we should go and try some of the finished wine. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Cool. Okay. Let's go. So this is a very interesting harvest on the rosé. It turned out a little more ruby. You know, every year the grapes are different. But we love the taste of this. It still has that great strawberry raspberry flavor in there, but dry. We like to say sort of like a Provence style rosé, which are so popular now. The color of this is so strikingly different from what we just saw, saw up there. It's amazing. I mean, look at that. Every vintage is different. This is actually on the 2014. Mm. I love rosé. Mm -hmm. And Chamberson rosé, it has such a wonderful, again, very fruit forward, but still incredibly dry. This right. is not a sweet rosé. No. Just enough acids to make it interesting. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to have you try our regular Chamberson. So okay. this is the one that we were actually harvesting for today when you were harvesting. This particular one, we do not age in oak barrels because we like the juice so much. But it's still a light, dry wine. It's made with a very light yeast, so you're tasting Chamberson. Chamberson is a wonderful wine. Mm -hmm. It is fruit forward and juicy. It's almost like baking spices and those red, red fruits like blackberries and raspberries. Yes. Definitely blackberry, dark cherry in there a bit. Mm -hmm. It's delicious. Yeah. <laughs> All right, it's time to pick a bottle and relax here at the vineyard. Thank you, Steffi. Thank you.